Hi friends, welcome to Biology Tutor. Today we are going to discuss about food fortification. Please share and subscribe. Don't forget to click the bell button too. Food fortification. What is food fortification or the what, what, what is the difference between food fortification or enrichment? Food fortification or enrichment is the process of adding micronutrients, essential, especially essential trace elements and vitamin to food. What is the difference between the food fortification and enrichment? In fortification, nutrients that don't naturally occur in the food are added to them. So, uh, in fortification, what we are doing, we will do, we will add the nutrients that don't naturally occur in the food. And WHO and Food and Agriculture Organization define food fortification as the practice of deliberately increasing the content of an essential micronutrient that is vitamins and minerals in a food so as to improve the nutritional quality of the food supply and to provide a public health benefit with minimal risk to health here enrichment enrichment is the addition of micronutrients to a food which are lost during processing that is the difference between food fortification and enrichment enrichment means we will add micronutrients to a food which are lost during processing but in food fortification that do, uh, that particular nut, uh, nutrients that don't naturally occur in the food we are adding that particular nutrients to the food that is the difference between food fortification and enrichment food fortification resource center ffrc what is ffrc it is set up by Food Safety and Standard Authority of India with support from Tata Trust, the source and support center to promote large scale fortification of food across India. Food fortification is scientifically proven, it is very cost effective, scalable, and sustainable global intervention that addresses the issue of micronutrient deficiencies. For fortified food, According to FSSAI rules, plus F logo is mandatory. In October 2016, FSSAI operationalized the fortification of, for, of the following foods like wheat flour and rice. It should be added with iron, vitamin B12 and folic acid. Second one, milk, milk powder and edible, edible oils, vitamins A and vitamin D. Double fortified salt. Iodine and iron are mandatorily, it should be added to the foods. The standards of fortified staples food, fortified dry, should contain iron, sodium iron, ethylene diamine, tetraacetate, folic acid, vitamin B12. In the level of uh, quantity is enlisted in the right side, you can see 28 mg, 14 mg, 75 mg, like that. The second one, in addition, rice may also be fortified with the following nutrients like zinc, oxide, vitamin A, thiamine, riboflavin, niacin, pyridoxine. In entire quantity is enlisted in right, right side per kg, 10 mg, 500 microgram, 1 mg, 1.25 mg, 12.5 mg, 5 mg respectively. That a uh, range of uh, uh, quantity, a uh, range is there, 10 mg to 15 mg, 500 microgram to 750 microgram it should be added in that particular range fortified milk the nutrients vitamin a vitamin d it should be added in 270 450 5 to 7.5 like that and nutrient source of vitamin a retinal acid retinal palmitate vitamin d called calciferol or ergo, ergo calciferol it should be added only from the plant source Fortified edible oil, vitamin A6 to 9.9, retinal acetate, uh, vitamin D, 0 0.11 to 0 0.16 microgram, whole calciferol, ergo calciferol, it should be only from plant source. Next one, international context. Two global trade agreements are relevant in food industry, both of which are administrated by the World Trade Organization. They are the first agreement in SPS agreement. The SPS agreement means it's a sanitary and phytosanitary agreement and the TBT agreement, the most important one, technical barrier to trade agreement. 
in TBT agreement, food fortification measures, whether mandatory or voluntary, are covered by TBT agreement. Need for fortification of food. Deficiency of micronutrients or micronutrient malnutrition, MNM, also known as hidden hunger, is a serious health risk in all over the world, especially in India. So here, what does it mean by hidden hunger? Hidden hunger means deficiency of micronutrients or micronutrient malnutrition. India has a very high burden of micronutrient deficiencies caused by vitamin A, iodine, iron and folic acid leading to night blindness, nyctilopia, goiter, anemia and various birth defects. So thus fortification is needed in order to decrease the incidence of nutrient deficiencies. Next, vitamin and mineral iron, zinc, iodine, vitamin A, folic acid, vitamin D. Function of iron carries oxygen. Uh, that functions and deficiencies here are enlisted in this slide. You can read this slide to get more information regarding these vitamins and minerals. Next slide, benefits of fortification. What are the benefits of fortification? We are uh, regularly adding this for vitamins and minerals and other things into the foods. What is the, what are the benefits of this for the fortification? Nutrients are to staple food since they are widely consumed. Thus, it improves the health of a large section of population all at once. That is a, uh, that's that's why government is bulkly adding this micro uh, this uh, for, uh, is doing fortification in food. It is safe method of improving nutrition among people. So we can uh, add uh, in bulk different kinds of nutrients into the food. So this uh, all the, the population of the particular country will get the benefit. The quantity added in small and well under the recommended daily allowances RDA. So it does not pose a health risk to the people. It is cost effective intervention and does not require any changes in eating patterns or food habits of people. It is a socio-culturally acceptable way to deliver nutrients to the people. It will wreak havoc in the society and people will get uh, bulk uh, or good amount of uh, dietary uh, they recommended dietary allowances. It does not alter the characteristics like the taste, aroma, or the texture of the food. Next, types of fortification. What are the different types of fortification? Here, mass fortification, targeted fortification, market driven, industry driven, open market fortification. Mass fortification is universal fortification to fortify foods that are widely consumed by the general population, like flour fortification with iron, folic acid, and iodized salt. The second one is targeted fortification. It's to fortify foods designed for specific population of subgroups, such as complementary foods for young children or rations, public through or public distributory system that rations for displaced populations. Examples targeting people with vitamin A deficiency and iron deficiency like anemia. And third one, market driven, industrial driven, open market, free market fortification allow food manufacturers to voluntarily fortify foods available in the marketplace like uh, chocolate, drink powder, breakfast cereal. Then fortification can also be divided into mandatory or voluntary. The mass fortification is mandatory and the targeted fortification can be either mandatory or voluntary. Market driven fortification is always voluntary but governed by regulatory limits. Government has given a regulatory limits for adding fortification of food. So next one, other types of fortification, household and community fortification. Adding micronutrients to foods at the household level, like vitamin B drops. Then second one, biofortification of staple foods. What is biofortification of staple foods? It is the breeding and genetic modification of plants so as to improve their nutrient content and or absorption. That means golden rice, golden rice genetically engineered producing beta carotene, pro-vitamin A to fight against vitamin A deficiency. That is golden rice and quality protein maize, QPM. Varieties contains nearly twice as much as lysine and tryptophan. 
it is produced by conventional plant breeding in the second and the third one the selenium rich wheat generally produced by application of selenium fertilizer so these are the other types of fortification then fortificant the micronutrient added to the food are known as fortificant the fortificants that are used are of plant origin <clears throat> in particularly for vitamin d the regulations clearly mention the source of nutrients as only from plant source in food vehicle what is food vehicle the food to which the fortificant is added is known as food vehicle here are the vehicle and the micronutrients, whole wheat flour and maida, micronutrients, iron, folic acid, calcium and zinc, rice, iron, folic acid, calcium, zinc, ICDS supplementary fruits, the micronutrients added, iron, folic acid, calcium, zinc, common salt, iodine and, uh, iron and iodine, milk and dairy products, iron, folic acid, calcium, vitamin D, A, omega 3, 6 fatty acids, sugar, vitamin A, vegetable oil, vitamin A and D. Food fortification in India. What is the history of food fortification in India? The history of food fortification in India dates back to 1953 when the fortification of Vanaspati with vitamin A became a mandate. It is in 1953 and iodine salt was mandated in 1962 by National Goiter Control Program. It is a part of National Goiter Control Program NGCP. Iodine salt was mandated in 1962. The government of India has recommended fortification in each of 10th, 11th and 12th five-year plan and the initiatives such as ICDS, midday meal and PDS are aimed at those at the highest risk for malnutrition, preschoolers, pregnant and lactating women, school children and poor and underserved sections of the population. These are the measures uh, by the government of India to tackle this issue. National Nutrition Mission and Initiative of NITI IO, that is a program known as National Nutrition Mission uh, Initiative of NITI IO, launched in Kuposhan Book Bharat. What is Kuposhan Book Bharat? It is launched in September 2017 to devastate, to reduce the malnutrition uh, in India, malnutrition free India by 2030, using food fortification as an intervention to curb this menace, to curb the micronutrient deficiencies. Mandatory food fortification in India exists for following foods like salt, milk, edible oil, rice, wheat, flour that we have already discussed. Double fortified salt. What, what is double fortified salt? Addresses issues of IDA, iron deficiency, anemia and IDD, iron deficiency disorders. Indian India's National Institute of Nutrition has pioneered the development of double fortified salt. Iodine, potassium, iodate, KO3, manufacturers level 20 to 30 ppm should be at a distribution channel including retail level of 15 to 30 ppm. Iron content uh, should be added uh, with ferrous sulfate or ferrous fumarate. It should be added in the limit of 850 to 1100 ppm. Next milk, fortified with milk, uh, vitamin A and D, vitamin A, retinyl acetate, or uh, retinyl permitted 270 to 450 microgram vitamin D ergo calcifer 5 to 7.5 microgram per liter of milk next edible oil since vitamin A and D are fat soluble vitamins fortification of edible oil and fats with vitamin A and D is good strategy to address micronutrient micronutrient malnutrition so the vitamin A retinyl acetate uh, <coughs> or retinyl permitted in 6 to 9.9 9 microgram per gram of oil, vitamin D, D2 ergo calcifer or D3, 0.11 to 0.6 microgram per gram of oil. These are the rice uh, nutrient level of fortification per kg. It should be added into the rice. Next one, uh, wheat should be mandatorily equipped with, added with, fortified with nutrients. Uh, and uh, the level of fortification is also mentioned over here. Fortificants of iron, iodine, vitamin A, B, C, D, 3 and others. Next, iron. Cereals are the most widely used vehicles for iron fortification. Others vehicles are such as milk products, sugar, curry powder, 
soya sauce and cookies have been successfully used kelimental iron say particularly micronites micro nine and iron sulfate and iron fumarate are preferred iron fortifications the presence of phytates polyphenols and calcium can adversely affect the bioavailability of non heme iron fortifications to prevent the sodium iron edta can be used it is better to fortificant and is approved by jecfa next thalassemia patients thalassemia patients or people on low iron diets should not consume foods fortified with iron accordingly food safety and standards regulation 2018 distinctively mentions that the package of food fortified with iron like wheat flour maida rice and double fortified salt shall carry a mandatory declaration what should be that declaration the declaration should be people with thalassemia may take under medical supervision next iodine salt is one of the most suitable vehicle for iodine fortification two chemical forms of iodine are currently used for iodization these are iodides and iodides and the level of fortification recommended by ca is the range from 80 to 200 ppm the iodides are more readily degraded in the presence of impurities whereas the iodides remain stable so iodides are more readily degraded than iodides and in salts uh, of lower quantity quality lower quality and preferred other vehicles used for iodization are milk bread flour sugar and condiments the fortification of animal feeds can be useful in increasing the iodine content of animal products vitamin a foods which have been successfully fortified with vitamin a include margarine fats and oils milk sugar cereals and instant noodles with spice mix in developed countries vitamin a fortification is limited to milk and dairy products margarine and fat spreads and breakfast cereals vitamin d the vehicles include of vitamin d include margarine vegetable oils and dairy products vitamin d metabolism is linked to calcium absorption and parathyroid hormone vitamin e the vehicles are fats and oils including margarine and fat spreads and breakfast cereals it is added as tocopherol acetate vitamin e intake is related to the total dietary intake of fat and it enhances absorption and bioconversion of dietary carotenoids to vitamin a vitamin c fortification done in fruit juices produce drinks and related beverages dairy products and some breakfast cereals and vitamin c improve iron availability vitamin c improve iron bioavailability vitamin b complex b vitamins are added to cereals and grains the development of of flavors due to the thermal instability of thiamine is easily circumvented by adding this vitamin following all heat treatments other benefit fortifications calcium fruit juice carbonated beverages and rice chloride water and toothpaste in adults 10 mg per day and in infant 0.7 per so mg per day niacin in bread thank you if you like this channel please share and subscribe don't forget to click the notification bell icon too